Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to my kitchen. I have something really wonderful for you today. I think we're going to have so much fun together. I know we always have fun when we're together in the kitchen making recipes with invisible ingredients. But today I'm really going to entertain you. And boy, do we need entertainment right now because it's kind of awful out there, isn't it? Wow, what do you got there? What? What do you have there? What, the root beer? What do you have there? <laughs> What? Oh, oh. Because I want to say it's not my root beer. I, no, I... Mom, I said, what do you have there? <laughs> While you're here, don't forget to subscribe. So you can hit that red button, hit the notification bell, give me a thumbs up for this video, all of that matters. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll know every time one of these episodes comes up. You're gonna have so much fun today. I'm premiering the first episode of my new game show. How spiritual is your kitchen? <laughs> and every month or so, I'm gonna have somebody come on here, a celebrity or an ordinary person, and we're gonna to get to go into their kitchen and see things of theirs that they feel like are make their kitchen spiritual, things that are meaningful to them. Do you wanna be on the spirituality kitchen? Do you wanna find out how spiritual your kitchen is? Leave me a comment, tell me you wanna come. I wanna be with you. That means we get to go into people's kitchens. I love going to people's kitchens, see what they look like, see what matters to people. And then because it is a game show, you, as a viewer, you get to rate it on a scale of one to whatever. How spiritual was their kitchen? Don't forget you're taking in a lot of stuff through your gaze, your eyes, your ears, and your mind. That's two thumbs down. Bad, depressing, disappointing, sad, upsetting. And I'm not saying you shouldn't know what's going on but make sure you're also getting in these good, uplifting, joyful things. And this is a particularly joyful thing because this morning, my guest is someone I know very, very well. I've known her my entire life. And she's somebody who's super beloved to people all over the world. And in addition to being a New York Times bestselling novelist, she's my mother. Here she is straight from her kitchen on Nantucket Island, a place I know we'd all like to be. It's Nancy Fair. Hey, Nancy. Hi, Sam. Hi, everyone. And you're going to show us the things that you chose. I asked you to choose the three things in your kitchen that are spiritual to you. So tell us, what did you find in your kitchen? First, I think I should say that I consider spirituality, when I think about it, because of you, with connection. It's all about connection with you or with creatures or with God um, and this is my first favorite item in the kitchen. I hope it doesn't read backwards. The world's best grandma. And that would be me. That's me. Uh, I know they make a lot of these mugs. And I hope everybody watching this who is a grandmother has one of these. My granddaughter Adeline gave it to me. And I use it because every time I look at it, I think of Adeline. Uh, people are going to ask, I'm sure, what do you put in that mug? Coffee. I love my morning coffee. And I love it. And I use Duncan coffee. I get it sent in big containers. And um, I use a Keurig. And this is part of my spirituality. I use a Keurig, but with baskets that I wash out and refill because I will not use I, uh, pods because they destroy the, well, they're indestructible. They're, they will last for billions of years. The basket, you put it in here, you put the coffee in here, you put it in the basket and you put it in the Keurig. Okay, so we got the mug, world's greatest grandma for a spiritual item. Tell us your second most spiritual item in your kitchen. What is it? Well, I don't know what you all saw, but I just saw a bunch of bags and maybe some garbage. Nancy, are you going to tell us that your garbage is spiritual? That would be exciting. My recycling is spiritual. It's a big pain. It's, it's a chore. It adds one more insignificant thing, it seems. We have had seals washed up on an Nantucket beach completely um, strangled by plastic. And I don't want to put any more plastic in the water for creatures. It's not just seals. It's everything from, from the little minnows to the, to the sharks that are eating, ingesting plastic and getting wrapped in it. To me, the planet is not mine. 
it's it's everyone's, including the tree outside, including the sharks in the water, um, even though I hope I never have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them. That's beautiful. So now we know Nancy Faye, a shark lady, tracking mm -hmm. the sharks on the island, rinsing out her recycling. We can imagine you now just taking that ritual uh, thinking about that almost like a meditation as you're clearing all the bags and containers and your curry cup. And what is the next item, most spiritual item in your kitchen? It's simply a white pitcher. And simply is the word. It's so beautiful. It's, it's so the lines of this pitcher and the swoop, the belly, it's so feminine to me the generosity of a handle. This was made in England. It's British ironstone. So it's probably over a hundred. It's definitely over a hundred years old, but it's, I think the most beautiful, generous thing in my kitchen. And it connects me to all the women in the past who have used pictures. So I feel a spiritual co connection to people in the past as well as to the sharks in the ocean. That's lovely. I actually didn't know. The only pictures I knew that you liked were the Red Sox pictures because they look good in uniform. <laughs> you know, in my spirituality kitchen, I'm cooking up in, you know, mostly invisible ingredients. So before we let you go, can you give us your recipe for a good life? No actual ingredients allowed. First of all, and it took me a long time to realize this, and some kind person said it, and it became sort of a motto to live by, which is be here now. I think another thing for a good life is to laugh a lot and to have friends who laugh a lot, who laugh deep belly laughs. I think the third thing is don't let fear hold you back. I think that's something that took me a long time to learn. I think we have to be brave. I think you have to be brave to fall in love with someone. You have to be brave to have a child. You have to be brave to, to risk making yourself public by writing a book or teaching yoga or giving a sermon. We can't be afraid. And I think Growing up, I was afraid of, of not measuring up. I wasn't as smart as everyone. I spent a lot of time worrying about that. And as I've gotten older, um, one of the joys of being older is that, well, for one thing, I don't have to worry about being thin anymore. <laughs> what a relief. It's amazing. I love it. Beautiful. Blend that all together. Nancy, there's recipe for the good life. So everybody out there, you have seen these three spiritual items from Nancy Thayer. What we want you to do is leave us a comment right here on YouTube. Leave a comment on Facebook. And what you're going to do is rate Nancy. How spiritual was her kitchen? Now, one thing I know about her is her 34th novel is coming out in May. What's it called, Mom? It's called Family Reunion. Family Reunion. So getting a plug in here, let's rate her on a scale of 1 to 34. 34, her kitchen was so spiritual, you felt like you were with Ram Dass. It was ecstatic. You were with the Pope. And one is, uh, we just fell asleep during this interview. So rate her there. <laughs> Don't do that. I know you, nobody will do that for you. Give her a rating how spiritual it was her kitchen. Let's have a little fun because, as she said, that's one of the most important ingredients of recipe for life is we're going to have some fun. No. Oh, we're a bunch of old hands talking, me and you. All this and we still love each other. I hope you had as much fun as I did with my mom in How Spiritual Is Your Kitchen. So don't forget to leave that comment, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and look out in another month or so. I'm going to have somebody else on here who knows who it's going to be. And we're going to have a great time in their kitchen looking at spiritual items. And really, you know what's fantastic about it is realizing that even if we don't think there's anything very spiritual about us or about our kitchen, it's not true. We're making meaning all the time. I hope you have been uplifted and entertained. See you next time.